welcome out. I see a lot of faces, uh, a lot of people that uh, we've had out in the past, you know, they're coming out again, people that are here for maybe for the first time, uh, you know, so overall, just welcome everybody. Uh, welcome out, everybody. Okay, so this is the uh, the website that we were uh, that we were looking at here initially. Let me enlarge this just a little bit, and let's go back to that point. So here we are. We're going to go back into the Texas tax sales here, and we're looking at the property listings here. And from here is where we can choose, uh, you know, what we want to look at. So if we want to look at the struck off properties here. And then we can choose, uh, you know, the county we want to look at. Now, uh, earlier, I mentioned some of the counties here, the biggest counties that we're looking at. And maybe I you know, pull that up just so I can look and see that again here. The biggest counties we've got are XR, Dallas, Harris, Tarrant, and Travis. You can also see the, the primary uh, cities, you know, that, uh, that uh, I guess the county seats uh, for, uh, for those counties. So we're looking at Austin, Fort Worth, Houston, Dallas, and San Antonio area. Um, so knowing that, if we wanted to look into uh, the struck off lists for some other ones, um, we could look into, there's Tarrant, which Tarrant, which county is Tarrant? Hmm. That is, that's Fort Worth area. You know, that's a nice area. Um, let's look at, let's see, what bit, let's see what they've got here. And it's not a humongous list, so I'll we'll have to see here. It's not nearly as big as some of the other lists. Uh, let's see what we've got as far as information. They don't have the values on this list. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Now they start to on some of them. Let's see if we're, we're just going to scan through this to see if we see anything with this list because it's not that big of a list. So we're not sure. We're, uh, There's one for 22 and 67. Yeah, and it does have an address. Let's take a look at it and see. Now, once I grab this partial address, one of the problems with it is that we don't have the city. And, and uh, all we really know is that it's in the Fort Worth area. The easiest way is just to use the Google Maps program because it's intuitive and it will it will auto fill in part of the address for you if you're not sure what it is. So now let's see here. Now Fort Worth. Um, Let's do this real quick. Located within the Birdville Independent School District, so we know it's within the it's oh Richland the, Hills, Richland Hills, Richland Hills area. Okay, so right there we know that it's uh, this one right here, the second one down, Richland Hills. So we take a look at this property and see what we're looking at. Looks like a pretty nice house. Yeah, it does. Unless it's just the land. Yeah, it could it could just be the land. Um, Let's go ahead and look up the address on Google and see if it pulls up uh, property. Yeah. I mean, on Zillow. Yeah, let's take a look here on Zillow. Now, they've got the complete address right here. So I'm going to copy it there. I'm going to plug it in here. And the reason why we're looking for it uh, on uh, on Zillow is because if it's a residential property, like if it's a house, uh, then it should have, you know, it should have a value attached to it. You know, you should be able to see a value. If it's raw land, then uh, it wouldn't be able to find anything. And this looks like raw land. It looks like, whoops. Hold on, let me hit that again. Looks like that piece of land next to the property. You know, mm -hmm. that's why it's only at sixteen thousand. The property is uh, that we were looking at right there was probably the one right here. Yeah. So, okay. Wonder why they have it adjust so high. I don't know. That's kind of bizarre. 
let's take a look. Since this list isn't really too exciting, let's take a look at yeah, one of the one other big ones. Do, uh, is, let's just look at this cell. Oh, I guess this cell coming up, see if it has any properties coming up as well. Just to see how big the list is. It's bigger. Let's see here. So it looks like they have probably quite a few properties coming to auction. But you know, even these are not really that close to uh, the size of uh, of some of these other counties here. Um, and in fact, I wonder if they've got a. I can't tell how many is on this. Maybe a couple hundred. Maybe a hundred. I don't know. Yeah. Now, as we're scrolling through this, what we're looking at really quickly is just this number and this number right here. So let me enlarge this a little bit so you can see even bigger here what I'm talking about here. So we're just looking at the judge value here and judge value here. And we're trying to find, you know, the numbers that make sense. Like, you know, some of these numbers obviously don't. $9,000 value and a $9,000 minimum bid wouldn't make any sense. Um, you know, so a lot of these are just junk property. You know, we're looking for one that has a spread that uh, that might be appealing. Do you have uh, the other website, the other Texas websites up? Yeah, yeah, I do. The other websites right here and right here. Yeah, so let's go to that first one you clicked on. This one right here. This is the uh, this is the second website that uh, that I mentioned here. This is uh, McCreary, Veselka, Bragg, and Allen attorneys of law here. MBBA. Maybe it's the other one. There's the other one has struck off lists. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one does. Yeah, the, yeah. This is the one that has struck off lists. Uh, this is uh, this is the third list. And, third company. Yeah, the third uh, the third law firm that handles um, sales. And this is Purdue, Brandon, Fielder, Collins, and Mott, um, which is uh, PBFCM.com. All these partners they throw in there. You think that they'd figure out a better way to do that? But they all want to have they their all name want up to have there. Their name. You know, they've all got to have their name up there. Um, okay, so from here, if you can see this, we go over here just to tax. If we're clicking on the tax section, it's going to give us some options. It gives us options here for um, we've got the tax sale, the resale. And they, you can uh, basically access the different resales here, but I'm thinking the uh, the struck off though. Uh, property struck off to the tax jurisdiction. So these are struck off. Okay. Okay. So uh, from here we can uh, pick out the county. They've just got them in alphabetical order here. An ISD. I wonder if that means. Uh, I wonder if those are municipalities. Yeah, it could be you know certain type of cities or. Yeah. Okay. But you can see that there's quite a different, you know, Fort Bend County. There's many different areas. And there's also a lot of areas in Florida that may not have, that are Texas. pretty small. Yeah, Texas, that have, a, you know, 100,000 or 150,000. There might be good properties in as well. And let's see here. We can even look at an upcoming auction list to just show some of the different styles of lists. Oh, you know, um, let me click on one of these here so we can look. Here's Tarrant County. Oh, and see, so they've got some of the smaller individual mm -hmm. places inside. Okay, so. Yeah, so this is for uh, for Arlington. This must be uh, that that individual tax jurisdiction. Um, and what this list is for? Uh, these are for uh, all the properties. These are the the county held properties, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, these are so basically interested parties. Um, you can you can basically purchase these properties. Person interested uh, in making offers to purchase any of the properties below. And send their offers here. So these are properties here that you can send in different offers for. You've got the list here. They've got the appraised value. I don't see the list amount, but up in the top it said you can contact them. 
to find out, or you can click on the website and probably look up the tax. And in the tax record, it'll have yeah, how much it, is owed. it'll have how much is owed, and so you can well, offer anything. But it, so what would really do is would use this appraised value is is kind of our guide uh, to decide which properties we may want to look at. Now, because there's not an address, we're probably going to need to, if we see a property that has an assessed value that we'd like to look at, there may be some information. Yeah. You can see an address there. So I guess there is some addresses. That one for 39 is uh, 599 Matlock Center. Yeah, circle. right there. Now we can just go ahead and take that information and go to a site like Google and see if we can pull up an address on it yeah. to find out a little bit more. And we're pretty sure this it. is maybe possibly something with Arlington, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, Arlington, Texas. It's interesting. I wonder if it's a suite inside yeah, here. It probably is. Yeah, this looks like uh, this is the. Uh, Spine and nerve surgery. So it's some type of, uh, you know, it's it has a number of different business suites in here. It could be one of those. You know, with $39,000 value, it probably would be a, some type of small suite um, appraised value. But, you know, we could do, do some more research into it and find out more about it. We can see another property here, $136,000 value on Abram Street. And so if we were interested in any of these properties, we would contact that email uh, address that they provided, or we'd go research uh, on the county record to find out how much is owed on the property uh, and see if it's a property that we'd be interested in uh, purchasing or investing into. Yeah, that one looks like, I wonder if it's just a lot. I wonder if it could be one of these. Uh, go go to the to the to the top view and look with the satellite image. Oh, it looks like it's that lot next to it. Yeah. So we can see right here, it's this lot right here. And if we wanted to verify that, we could probably pull into the county record to take a look. Yeah, we look at, we could look at the map and and it would be able to show us the exact property lines. So that's probably not something we're looking for, even though it may have a decent value. We're looking for something uh, more like a home. You know, another one that, that is most likely going to be raw land, you can tell by the number of acres, you know, that are included. So you've got, you know, 2.7 acres here. You've got 3.4 acres here. Um, you know, most likely large tracts of land. That one, try the 330 East Abram Street. This is track one. Uh, it's lots A through four, so it could be a larger one too. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see that here is that lot. that big. That last one might be. Let's take a look. Uh, looks like one or two. Yeah, so those are all their all land. Let's see here. You know, of course, this is also the way though that uh, that it oftentimes works with over the counter. You've got to do more sifting. You know, so we've only been doing this here for a few minutes. You know, let's look at the other type of list though, because we actually look at uh, cover as many websites here as we can for them. Um, this first website here, they've got upcoming tax sales that are listed in a pretty easy format for uh, for viewing them. Um, so like for, uh, here was Bastrop County. You can see the form here for the list. This is for a tax sale that's scheduled on August 5th. So, you know, as with all the counties, there's gonna be that first Tuesday. And what we can see here are the minimum bids and then the market value, or, you know, most likely uh, maybe a market value, most likely it's some type of an assessed value. So you can see some of these, again, you're always going to have these ones where the numbers just don't make any sense at all. We're not really interested in those. Uh, we're more interested in the ones that are going to have numbers that make a little bit better sense. With some of these, uh, you know, look a little bit better. That one's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, 
it looks like a manufactured home, which we can tell from And it might actually be a lien on the manufactured home itself. Could be land too. Sometimes they, depending on how they do their. Now, what's interesting about this one is with this list, I don't know that they would give us a physical address anywhere. I think we'd have to. The only way we can get a physical address with this list is by pulling it up through the county records. So with a list like this, um, you know, we can get an idea of maybe what we're interested in, uh, you know, with one of these properties. But from here, what we would need to do is pull up the county record. You know, we would need to uh, determine. Uh, we'd have to pull up the county record in order to find an address. You know, maybe it's worth it to take a minute to do that. Also, if anybody has any questions, you guys feel free to, to, uh, to fire away. Sometimes we, uh, well, we want to make sure we're answering any questions anybody has. So don't hesitate to uh, to ask here if there's anything that we're doing so far that's losing it, or if uh, uh, if you'd like us to to focus on a certain county here in Texas, or you'd like to look at anything there. Uh, you know, we've got we've got a few more minutes. You know, we've got about ten minutes or so where we could look at uh, different counties, anything you're interested in. For the time being, though, let's take a look at how we would go about locating the. Uh, whoops, how we'd go about locating an address on one of these properties. Or maybe even just looking at another over-the-counter list. Really, we can do whatever you're most interested in. So if anybody has any any suggestions, we're we're more than happy to take a look at it. <coughs> Some of these Let's you know, look at an upcoming list, it's a little easier. Oh actually, you know what um, might be kind of interesting is to look at um, the uh, the list there that I was looking at originally. For Bexar County, the, uh, the over-the-counter list. Yeah. Okay, so let me enlarge this a little bit here, so we can just. Okay. Yeah, that'll make that pretty big. So you should be able to see that pretty well. Okay, so from here you can see this is pretty easy. We've got the uh, we've got the judge value, the struck off amounts here, uh, and then we've got a physical address. In some cases, if there is a physical address, so you can see we've got all these properties here that aren't really going to make sense. You know, three thousand, three thousand, eight thousand, eight thousand. But what this allow you to do is if you use these strategies, you'll quickly be able to go through the list. I mean, we can see one here, sixteen sixty seven. That looks like a better, uh, you know, bid to value ratio than one that's, you know, 3,000 and 3,000, obviously. I wonder what that means. It could have been already sold. Yeah, it may have been. Okay, so. Uh, Let's look at it real quick and see what it was because it probably did sell uh, to somebody who bought it, you know, struck off over the counter. Let's see here. We're looking at what uh, Bexar County, which is San Antonio. Oh yeah, somebody must have picked that up. They must have bought that property, which would be a pretty good little property to buy. You know, I mean, you look at the neighborhood. The neighborhood's not too bad for you know as small as those little homes are. No, I mean, you know, this property and this property are the only eyesores in the whole neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so this property may have been this one here to a... Uh, Somebody's already went through the list. I wonder what the value is on it. I wonder what, uh, yeah. I wonder when, it's, when it was offered for sale, too. I'm just going to grab that address. We're just going to plug it in here to see what it's estimated to be worth here. Do wrong here. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Uh, just who knows? We'll, we'll keep we'll keep looking here because I mean some of these um, some of these. What I found is that sometimes the adjudged value is way under what the uh, uh, it's way under what the 
the market, you know, is. what the actual market value is. Okay, so let's see here. This property right here, we know is raw land because there's no physical address. It makes it pretty easy. We scroll down. Okay, we've got this property right here, which has, uh, you know, twenty seven thousand dollar amount versus the seventy three. Is this? I'm trying to think. Of, this is the one that I looked at that was just the uh, March and Lane. This might be the one that just had that, you know, that that concrete. Yeah, this is that one. Okay, so this one right here, good example here of, you know, of a problem with, I mean, a property with some problems. That's that one we showed you in the example. Let's look a little bit further down here. You know, again, none of these yet really look too appealing, but this list, to give you an idea, I mean, this list is so big. I mean, uh, it's got to have hundreds of properties on here. There's one on Rice Road. Yeah, let's take a look at this one. This one has an $18,000 amount. It's a struck off amount. You know, this is really the... Once you learn how to go through and research county records and go through tax sale lists quickly uh, to evaluate and find property, uh, this is really what's going to separate you from all of the competition out there, is your ability to go through and, and find properties that are good value uh, that are and go through, research those properties, make sure that they're going to be a good investment, and then investing into them. This research that you're going through and that you're going to be learning uh, is is really going to separate you from from the other people at the auction. You'll be, you'd be amazed, uh, and if you've ever been to a sat tax sale, when you go, there's going to be people there that have no clue about what they're doing. They have done no research. Uh, they're going to go there just based off of seeing a TV infomercial or hearing about you know government tax sales, and there's great opportunity. And so you're going to have the advantage over pretty much everyone in the room, you'll be one of the most educated investors in the room on how to uh, evaluate property and really the whole tax sale process. Well, and, you know, really there aren't that many people that really even understand the over-the-counter side of it here and that are looking through and trying to buy all these over-the-counter lists. I mean, these properties are selling, but they're not selling as quickly as as they would be if, if this was a really uh, if this was an investment strategy that had a ton of competition on this level, uh, you know, with the over the counter stuff, there's a lot of opportunity that's in there. It's just that nobody's really digging through it. Um, but you know, uh, whether you're looking at the actual sale, whether you're looking at over the counter opportunities, uh, you can find opportunities in both. You know. You're going to find great properties that will sell at auction that you can pick up for good prices. The only downside to that would be that, uh, that it's a live sale. You've got to be there unless the county allows for some type of a sealed bid, which is always worth asking if they uh, have anything or it's worth looking to see if they have some type of a sealed bid system. Because if that's the case and they do have a sealed bid system, then you can conduct all of the research on the property uh, without uh, – can conduct all the research online, put in a sealed bid, and it's really in a lot of ways like an, like an online auction. Oh, yeah, this is another one that's missing here. I remember Only three grand, though. Yeah, yeah. You know, and for some people, depending on what kind of a price point you're at, let's say that you've got a limited amount of money. So, uh, you know, if you've got a limited amount of money here, which I'm sure everybody's got a limited amount, but let's say that um, you've got $5,000 tops, okay, or $6,000, whatever it is. Let's say you got one penny. <laughs> oh, yeah, struck off them out there, one cent. That's kind of it's interesting. It's got an address, too. I wonder why. Let's see what it is. It's kind of interesting. It might be because it's something like a drainage ditch or. 
Let me look at the overhead image again here of it. Some part of the... It's that little grass, I bet. Yeah, it probably is a little stretch of grass right there by it. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look until we can find something here that looks a little bit better. Let's see here. It's kind of funny. I'm just looking here at this list. You know, I, I wish they had a total number on this list. So you could see just how many properties are here. It'd be kind of valuable to know. It's kind of weird in the way they offer it because it's not like uh, this list is available in lots of different formats. This is the only format they really have it in. Uh, so you're kind of stuck with it in, uh, in dealing with it. Just one big, long list. Let's go ahead and look at some of the oh. upcoming auctions real quick. Yeah, look at this one right here real quick. Though. This one right here is an $8,400 amount. I can't tell if it's a house or not. There's something back there. Oh yeah, there is, but that house is looking pretty like trashed. it's pretty trashed. Let's see here. You know, you could work through a list though like this. Oh, you could probably do it in maybe a couple hours. I think you could probably get through this list. And by the time you got through it, you, you would have a handful of properties you were interested in. You know, you can start to whittle it down and narrow it down from there. Uh, but the other option, though, is to look at some of the, you know, some of the auctions that are coming up here, some of the live sales, you know, which we could look at here as well if we wanted. You know, we could look at any of the uh, the counties here. In addition, if, if, you know, you're looking at the live auctions that are coming up or you're really interested in purchasing over the counters in Texas, then right after the auction happens and those fresh uh, over the counters are available, the fresh struck off list, you'll want to go to the county that you're interested in working in and get that list as soon as it's available. Uh, because there, you know, there may have only been a limited people at the auction that, that month, and there may have been twice as many properties offered, or, you know, for whatever reason, there may have been good properties that didn't sell, and that those properties are usually the ones that are going to be picked up, you know, within... 30 to 60, 90 days after the sale. And so, you know, researching those properties right as they get, um, as they get on the struck off list is always going to give you uh, the best opportunity to grab a property before it quickly sells by another investor. Uh, because there's other investors as well that are looking through and purchasing. I mean, we've already seen one of them that's been purchased uh, by an investor, that single family home. So looking at those brand new lists, if that's a strategy you're interested in, is going to be uh, helpful in finding uh, a great property as well. Let's see here. What the Becks are? Where's Becks are? You in San Antonio? Um, no, Fort. Let's see here. Yeah, yeah, San Antonio. Oh, hold on here. I think I addressed Breeze. What is it? It just says pine. Let's see here. Maybe we'll look around. There's lots of good examples here. Um, oh, okay. So, yeah, here's one right here that's kind of interesting. Uh, this says that uh, they're both covered by the same. Okay, so this one has two properties. Or is it one property in two suits? Let's take a look. All right, so this property here, which one is it? There's a garbage can right there. Yeah, and the number we're looking for specifically is 3334. So actually, let me scoot away here just a little bit. Let's take a look and see if there's a number on the mailbox. 
or there's a number right up there. Just Zillow it too. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's this one right here. You can see the three, 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 four. So this is the property right here. It's coming up here for auction. And yeah, let me grab that full address. Let's see what this thing estimates to be worth. Looks like it's estimated to be worth about 105 right now. So again, so this is the property. Let's look at the street view here on it. Yeah, that's it right there. Continue to scroll down below. We'll see some additional information about it as far as the, the market value over the last five years. Uh, we'll be able to see if it's sold recently. Um, I can't, can't really see it like it has sold. So that'll tell us something about the, uh, the deed that was issued. Yeah, well, you know why? Uh, yeah, you know, it has does have any kind of a sales history with this? We would look into the sales history through the uh, through the county records. The property's had a maximum value. It looks like you know up around the hundred and fifty thousand dollar range. Um, has a rent estimate though of about a thousand dollars a month. So again, we're looking at it right here, sixteen thousand uh, dollar, sixteen thousand dollar estimated minimum bid is what it'll open up at. It looks like uh, it says two suits here, but they're both covered by the minimum bid. So essentially, it sounds like the, the minimum bid covers whatever's owed on it. Yeah. But you'd want to find out. Uh, you know, there's actually a lot of properties. You know, if you were to if you were to rent that property out at a thousand dollars a month, though, uh, you know, within 16 months, this investment would pay for itself, and then you know, for the rest of your life, you'd be making a thousand dollars a month off of it. Uh, and so when you look at when you look at it like that, when you own the property outright, then becoming a landlord is a different scenario because you're not going to be fixing any faucets. Uh, you're not going to be worrying about paying a mortgage on the property uh, every month. That straight paint, that straight profit, and you can have a property management uh, company handle it for you and still bring in nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah, absolutely. Now this property that we're looking at right here. Uh, has a uh, minimum bid amount of six thousand. Uh, we're looking at it here. You can see it's a nice little house here. Uh, let's take a look at what it's estimated to be worth. About seventy-five thousand. So you've got a good property there in terms of the bid to value ratio. You know it's going to start out at a good low number. Um, you know that would be a good one to uh, to bid on here. At the auction, that would be a good one to conduct some some research on. Um, you know, anything. I guess one thing to keep in mind is that if you look at the direction that things have gone here with the country and with the economy, people are struggling. They're struggling more now than they uh, than they have uh, in perhaps decades. And uh, what's really happening is is that uh, a lot of these things that we're paying for have outpaced uh, what what uh, what's income you know, for people. So people are forced to stretch dollars further. What that really means, what it equates to is low income housing is going to be in greater demand, you know, in the future. <clears throat> I mean, from now and in the future than it's ever been before. Uh, housing that people can get into uh, without needing, uh, you know, without having good credit, uh, you know, so owner financing, that kind of thing. That's going to be in greater demand than there uh, in the future than there than it's ever been before. Uh, you know, alternatives to you know standard financing will will be uh, really popular in the future, uh, and there will be lots of people looking for it. There's always an opportunity with uh, with uh, with starter homes and with low income housing uh, for people to buy. They're always going to be able to you know to move. You're always going to be able to have them rented out or uh, or be able to sell them uh, of any type of real estate, they're the most liquid real estate, essentially. They're the easiest ones to make liquid because, uh, you know, because they're always, they'll always be in demand and, you know, the people are always looking to buy and sell them. That's how people look to get started in life. They look to buy a property like that, own it for a while, turn around and eventually sell it for a profit. I mean, so, uh, you know, keep in mind that what you're dealing with here is really the best type of collateral when it comes to properties. It's, it's the best, uh, 
it is a good liquid form of real estate, I guess you could say. It's it's the real estate that's going to be the easiest to rent out, the easiest to move. Oh, I think with, uh, with that being said there, we've covered a lot. Uh, so if you have any questions here that uh, that we haven't really covered here uh, in uh, in this training, feel free to send us uh, any kind of a question by email. Uh, we've covered uh, those three different websites and how you can locate and find uh, just about any type of tax sell list in uh, in Texas and also how you can research them. So we've looked at uh, how you can locate, find these uh, live tax sales, but also how you can find, locate the over-the-counter lists uh, in, uh, in Texas through the law firms. So uh, we hope you've enjoyed the training tonight. Again, if you have any questions at all, send them in to support at propertytaxlist.com. Uh, aside from that, though, everybody have a great uh, have a great week. Uh, we'll hope to hear from you between now and, uh, and next week. We hope you'll join us again. Have a good evening.